Kenya's gold. Happy Midweek viewers and thank you so much for joining us this Wednesday right here at Kenya's Gold. Now I know you're already curious, wondering why we have guests on set already. We will be briefing you on what the show is all about today. But before we get to that, allow me to first wish you a happy Labor Day. It always feels absolutely nice to get a holiday in between the week. But now the problem will be tomorrow a lot of us are going to mistake it for Monday. <laughs> you get what I mean? Yeah. But now that's a problem for tomorrow. We are going to deal with it tomorrow. But of course, today we are celebrating workers in every single corner of the country for the absolutely good job they get to do every single day. Feel very much seen, had, and appreciated. Now, speaking of workers, there's one particular worker who almost knows no day off. It's very possible to take this worker for granted However, whatever they produce is very crucial because it supports a life. I am talking about the farmer, a career that is characterized by a lot of patients. Imagine someone taking a seed to the ground and watching it grow for very many years so that you and I can have a hot plate of food on our table every single day. Hats off to the farmers, mm. isn't it? Now, thank you so very much for joining us right here at Kenya's Gold, a show that is all about learning and appreciating and celebrating our farmers every single day as we work towards our agenda of achieving food security. Very many thanks for joining us. We do have an absolutely brilliant show lined up for you this Labor Day. My name is Violeta Angina. Jina langu ni Emmanuel Terera Santa sana kwa kuku bali kujiunga na siku na mengi tumekuendelea kabisa pole sana makiwa kwa wale ambao wamepoteza upendo wao kutokana na mvua ambayo inaendelea kushuhudiwa taifa la Kenya taarifa zinaendelea kumiminika kuhusiana na watu kufa kutokana na mafuriko kote nchini na vile vile so lazimani kuwa na wakulima wakipoteza baada ya safari safari zangu jana <laughs> Uh, la kusikitisha sana ngina yes. tulikuta mkulima mbaya amepoteza takriban bilioni moja nukta mbili kutokana na mafuriko na vile vile mdogo sana yule ambaye amejitosa katika ulingo wa ukulima hivi majuzi tu mwaka right. elfu mbili ishirini mm -hmm. alipoteza uh, takriban shilingi mili, uh, laki tano right. lakini bado wamesema kwamba hato kufa moyo ndio maana jana mm -hmm. hukunipata hapa mm -hmm. ni swala kubwa zima ambalo tunazungumzia mpenzi mtazamaji na vile vile mkulima angalia nyume wetu yetu hapa tayari umeketi kitako taratibu kuna swala zimetozungumzia hmm. siku ya leo usitake kwenda popote usibonyeze kidogo chako maana hmm. papa hapa anasema kila wakati kwamba ni darasani kalamu karatasi andika hmm. tekeleza madai ili sote tulishe taifa la Kenya. Right, speaking of yesterday when you were away we hmm. continued with our journey on macadamia farming in Kenya a sector that does have a lot of great potential given the high demand of the nut in the international market and also the high nutritional value that comes with with the nut. Now something very interesting and shocking to learn is that one of the challenges that macadamia farmers are facing in Kenya is the high price of a seedling. Imagine a farmer having to go buy a macadamia seedling at 500 mm -hmm. Kenya shillings. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. All right, but we will definitely keep having these conversations right here at Kenya's Gold to see what we can do to streamline the macadamia sector for our farmers. Now moving to the agenda of the day, as you all know, every single Wednesday, we do focus on animal farming in Kenya. Now, we have been on an incredible journey of goat farming in Kenya. We started all the way learning so much about goats kept for meat, where we were exploring breeds like the gala breeds, boar breeds, tog and bag. We went all the way to dairy goats, where we are talking about breeds like the alpine. The journey did not end there, because last week we did go all the way to a slaughterhouse to learn a lot lot more when it comes to quality meat control. Now today we will be doing things absolutely different. We are opening the floor to goat farmers and professional vets who will be giving a lot of advice to our farmers in this agri sector. But before we get straight into this conversation that I'm really looking forward to, how about to remind ourselves of the different regions that Terer did <laughs> visit during this very very interesting journey of goat farming in Kenya. Take a look. 
hapa nipo katika kaunti ya 015 kaunti kitu yaangalia mantari mawe makubwa kweli kweli nyuma yangu kumaanisha kwamba hapa kuna mazuri or ekule si salamu ni sehemu moja katika kaunti ya Narok nipo katika eneo la Kisama hapa ni Neema Export Slaughterhouse nipo katika Kajado West eneo la Ola City nama bila shaka mpenzi mtazamaji bila wasiwasi kabisa tupo ange kukuletea hayo yote kutoka kwa ukulima umesikiliza tumesafiri kweli kweli kubwa zaidi ni kuhakikisha kwamba wewe mkulima ambaye tunakuenzi sana unapata nafasi ya kufamu kutoka kwa wakulima all right now jumping straight into our gold conversation like we always say right here at Kenya's Gold this is the space where our farmers voices and needs will be had and right now I want to open and the floor to our farmers and professional vets who are very important in the agricultural value chain. Now we are joined by, on my far right, we do have Mr. Peter Mutinda, who is a vet, professional vet. Thank you so very much for making time to be with us today. We also do have Florence Wamboy, who is a goat farmer. Thank you so much. We also do have Henry, Asante Sana Kukuja Sikuya Leo. On my left, we do have Dr. Oketch, who is also a goat farmer. And on my very end, Dr. Peterkin, who is also a professional vet. Thank you so very much for making time to be with us today. Now, just jumping straight into the conversation, you do want to understand the journey of our good farmers and also some of the challenges that you have faced in the sector. Take good advantage because you do have professionals here to help you learn a lot more about the sector. And I'm going to start with you, Florence, our lady of the day. Asante Sana for coming today. And we'll like to understand what exactly led you into goat farming and in the period that you have been in the goat farming sector what are some of those golden benefits that you have seen and witnessed in that sector okay thank you so much first of all for having me here um, I've done goat farming for two years the last two years but I've not just only been a goat farmer we were farmers for about four years uh, for the last four years, and we started with plant farming. Um, but stuff happened, and we decided to go into goat farming, first of all, because it was more manageable. It did not need too much capital um, to start. Mm -hmm. uh, it was also easier for us to manage um, without having uh, to employ other people. Uh, so that make, made it much cheaper for us. So you do goat? For meat or for milk? We do goats for milk. And where is your farm? In Kitangela. Right. Okay. Ina furaisha sana kuona agency ya kike na zama kubwa sana kule. Macha nije kwa kumoja kumoja, Henry. Wewe ni mkule maambuzi. Lakini nataka sana kufamu wapo kile unafanya ni nini hasa kuhusia na swala la breeding. Ningependa kwanza kurudisha shukura nizangu kwa kunialika kukuja hapa. Na natarajia taweza kunufaika uh -huh. na <coughs> mambo ambayo tutajadili hapa. Uh -huh. uh, kusema kweli kama mimi nikiwa mkulima zile mbuzi huwa naweka ni, ni aina ya token bag. Right. Na hizo token bag uh, lile jambo nili nilihakikisha kwamba ninalishughulikia ni hasa ni ku Ni, ni, nilitaka ni, ni, nipate ile mbegu yenye what we call pure breed right. sababu ukiingia kwa soko saa hizi mm -hmm. utapata mbegu aina nyingi sana mm -hmm. na utadanganya utaambii ni pure na ukienda un, unakuta tu ni mbegu yani mchanganyiko mm -hmm. so hilo ndilo jambo nili nilihakikisha nimeshughulikia sana right yes. now i'll come to you mr peterkin who is a professional vet now we've had henry has token bag right and there's also another farmer who's keeping goats for meat and they'll probably go for gala or boa boats boa goats all of those are different varieties but still very good when it comes to meat what would make one person go for token bag and not gala or boa yet at the end of the day it's meat that you're trying to get out of the goat what informs that decision 
First of all, uh, I would like to say uh, thank you for this opportunity. Of course. And um, happy Labor Day to all the veterinarians and uh, all stakeholders within the animal value chain. Mm -hmm. So uh, what would make someone prefer a, a, a boa goat over a gala goat? I'd say, first of all, um, the boa goats have uh, better uh, production in terms of uh, uh, meat mass or muscle mass, mm -hmm. and uh, also the, the growth rate. So, so those are some of the factors that can inform that. And also um, someone can, can prefer the gala over the, the, the boa mm -hmm. because of adaptivity. Mm -hmm. And you can also keep uh, the gala in uh, very, very uh, semi or arid conditions like uh, the farmer that we had keep them in Mwingi. Does the price vary? The price does vary and you can target your market. Uh, just the same way I said, um, uh, ga I mean, uh, the, the, the gala goats can be a little bit cheaper compared to the boa. Right. So one can choose to specify to specifically keep the boas because they fetch a higher market price. Right. Okay. Uh, tukitoka kwa daktari na haja kuwako bwana Okech. Kuna swala zima sana mbali nje tokeza hapa. Wewe ni mkulima wa mbuzi. Lakini kuna mtu anakutegemea na nataka kujua pia namna ataingia. Wakati wewe unakwenda uh, kule sokoni kununua mbuzi, ulikuwa unaangalia nini? Ah, uh, asante sana bwana Terer. Mm -hmm. Na asante kwa humu aliko. <coughs> na pia tunasema pole kwa Kenya ambao wamedhiriwa na hijanga ya, ya mafuriko. Uh, kuna yale ambayo nilikuwa ninaangalia uh, wakati nilikuwa naenda kutafuta mbuzi. Uh, first thing is the climate ya kule ambako mimi naeka ile mbuzi. Je, can that climate uh, sustain that goat? Bwana uh, bwana <coughs> Mwana Henry hapa amesema kwamba yeye anaeka Togenberg tulipata kwamba Togenberg inafanya vizuri zile eneo ambao kuna baridi sababu iko na ngozi mzito Sanen mimi mimi ni mfugaji wa Sanen ilikuwa inahitaji mahali ambapo kuna joto kule ambako si tunakaa kuna joto kidogo kajado kwa hivyo niliona kwamba hiyo eneo inaweza kuza Sanen and that's why I chose on Sanen so getting to understand first of all get the knowledge of the place where you stay and the kind of animals it can sustain that is very important. So hiyo hiyo ndio kitu ya kwanza nilikuwa nina uh, ninazingatia zaidi. Alafu ile mbuzi ambayo nataka kuifuga nataka kuifanyia nini? Si ndio? Alafu kama kuna lishe ambayo nitapata ya, ya kuikuza ile mbuzi pia. Na um, ni hayo kuanzia kwanza. Okay. All right. Very great to hear our farmers, very knowledgeable when it comes to the different breeds and also having particular reasons as to why they went for a particular breed as opposed to another. Now, one of the things that, Florence, you've mentioned is the fact that goats are very easy to manage. They do not require a lot of work, and that's why it was very easy for you to get into that agri sector. But I want to speak right now to Mr. Peter Mutinda. Because of that knowledge, goats see Kazimingi, but what are are those very essential you know practices that you need to make sure that you don't ignore if you want optimum production from your goats whether it's for meat or for dairy because there's like a very thin line between it's 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 easy to maintain and also not maintaining them at all what should you make sure you take care of priority uh, thank you so much Gina, for that question mm -hmm. <coughs> it is interesting to learn uh, that farmers are getting this knowledge on goat farming and the production systems that we have so when you want to start a goat farming, some of the things that you have to take care of. One, you have to ensure that you have enough feed for your animals. Before you set up the farm, I always advise farmers to look at the aspect of having enough feed before you introduce the goats. Then from there, after you introduce the goats, you are supposed to also factor in issues with the, the structures that you put in place, because that one has a, a direct influence on the health of the animals. Mm -hmm. Then from there, you also need to consult your veterinary uh, professional for frequent advice and for frequent checks of the animals that you are keeping to maybe prevent any instances of diseases that may occur in the farm. Okay. By managing all those factors together, you're going to have a successful farm altogether. Right. Yeah. Apo wakati na zungumza Henry, naja kuwako daktari mwenyoki, kuna swala zima na zungumza sana kusana breeding. Yena tafta specific, anasema ile tunaisa pure breed. Kuna swala la breed na AI na vile vile embryo transfer. Nipatiu fafanuzi kidogo kusana swala ilo kama linaiza kana kweli katika taifa lake. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, I would say that um, there are two institutions uh, by the government. One is the CALRO, the Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization, and this CAGRIC, that is the Kenya um, 
Animal Genetic Resources Center. So for CAGRI, they deal with uh, uh, semen mostly, the, for, be it for bulls and um, be it uh, for uh, goats. Mm -hmm. So you can get pure breed um, semen, or rather you can get semen from CAGRI, and um, they do have a catalog. Actually, if you get time, you can visit their website. You can Google CAGRI uh, 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 catalog. You have all the way from Sanen, Togenberg, Anglo-Nubian. And uh, Calro does um, uh, research on these dairy goats. They have a dairy uh, institution in Naivasha. And also you can, uh, you, you can import uh, dairy uh, an animals, but it can be a little bit expensive. That is why Kagri came through to establish uh, an institution to deal with semen. Mm -hmm. Do we have enough professionals in that sector? Um, I'd say that the Goat AI station was set up, I think, a year or two years ago. Uh -huh. And um, the government is still building capacity. We uh -huh. do have a lot of vets who need to be employed, actually. Uh -huh. I would say we don't have enough uh, capacity by the uh -huh. government. And uh, that is why the farmers will tell you, uh -huh. you know, we don't get these services. It's not that they are not there. Uh -huh. The government needs to do some investments. Uh -huh. I saw that they, the, the other day they came up with something called Jeans on Wheels. Mm -hmm. where you get um, uh, the whole package, semen, embryo transfer uh, kit in one um, uh, vehicle. Mm -hmm. okay. yes. And just to ensure professionalism in that sector, we have seen um, vets who do the AI insemination with cows. If I am very professional in doing that, and that's my area of expertise, can I do it on goats as well? Or it's a specific person who you deal with cows, I deal with goats, or you can mix them. Actually, veterinarians are one of the most unique professionals uh, that I know mm -hmm. because they do everything. You either are the cardiologist, you are the anesthetist, you are the surgeon, at the same time you are the general practitioner. So you cannot get to choose and specialize that. You only do goods. Yeah. Apo kwako Henry vile vile bado tusalie kwa mambo ya breeding. Wewe hutumia mbuzi dume moja. Sio. Kuna wakati ambapo watu uja kwako kuomba labda watume uye mbuzi dume na je wanatoka karibu wa mbali? Uh, kusema kweli kuna tatizo kubwa sana la kupata mbegu. Mm Hiyo -hmm. mbegu safi. Mm -hmm. Sababu unaweza kuta wakulima wanatoka mbali kama nakuru, na hu, nyahururu, nyeri, kajado. Wananipigia simu. Hata mm -hmm. sijui anapata namba zangu wapi. Wakaniambia kuwa mbuzi yangu inahitaji dume. Na sijui nifanya nini. Nimetafuta dume miezi tatu, miezi ine, miezi tano na sijapata. Mm -hmm. Na pengine niseme kuwa nimekuwa na mbuzi kuanzia mwaka elfu mbili e, na kumi na, na sita. Mm -hmm. Na huo wakati wote hiyo shida imekuweko. Hata mimi before, kama sijapata huyo ndume, na kumbuka kuna mbuzi yangu nilikaa na e, miezi sita. Mbaka mm -hmm. likuwa na muwanea huruma tu. Ababu hile wakati ukifika, mm -hmm. ni makelele, makelele, kunisumbua, mm -hmm. na sitaki kumpea na ndume mwanya naenda kuokota hivi. Mm -hmm. Kwa hivi hilo, hilo, hilo tatizo la ndume liko. Mm -hmm. Na kama kuna hiyo mipango kwa serikali mm -hmm. ya, ya hiyo kuleta AI, mm -hmm. na fikiri siyo wakulima wengi wanajua. Kama hiko. Mm -hmm. Kwa hivyo serikali inatakikana ifanye bidii kabisa ili iweze kuhamasisha watu na wajue. Okay. Sababu vile naona kilimo cha mbuzi ni kilimo ambacho kinainuka haraka sana. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. All right, an absolutely fantastic conversation that we are having right here in studio with our professionals, Dr. Peter Kane and also Mr. Peter, and also our farmers, Florence, Henry, and Dr. Oketch. We're taking a short commercial break right now, but when we come back, we'd like to find out in these very adverse weather conditions, what diseases could affect our goats and what can our farmers do to make sure that they safeguard their animals in this season. That and a lot more will form part of our conversation when we come back after this short commercial break. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 